I think uh, it's wrong. It's always wrong. There, there's no, there's no real time for it. You know, it's it's a. Uh, you know, it's not the UFC, it's not Pride, it's not K1, you know, we're, we're in, uh, the first thing you want to do is, you got to remember, fans, you know, the fans are the most important part of a professional wrestling match, whether it be, you know, 50 fans or 15,000, you know, the fans are the most important thing, so shooting on an opponent is, you know, nothing, because it's, it's a dance, you're working together, and, you know, I've wrestled hundreds of guys that I don't like personally or professionally or, you know, or there's politics involved and stuff like that. But never, never in my mind I, I've ever thought of, you know, actually double-crossing or shooting on somebody. Just for the simple fact that, you know, it's, it's not fair to the fans or, or the, the company or even the guy, no matter, you know, no matter what he's done. You know, the, the bleeding was, you know, people get confused because they think that, you know, it was something I like. You know, I, I'm not a masochistic person. I was I was raised on that old school philosophy that you know if there's blood needed you got to do it because it's it's your job you know to enhance the match and you know I never walked up to Paul Heyman and said hey man uh, you know I can bleed buckets you know it, it and if you, if you talk to the old school guys that said wow you know Carino gets really good really good color he bleeds all the time they would tell you the same thing that I would tell you I must do it wrong because I have all these scars on my head and you know I, I bleed too much that. You know, there, you, you, there was, I, I must have missed that day of wrestling school or something like that because I was never taught how to do it and I just did it to, because I was told to do it. And, but like the old school thing, if you look back at the old school guys, like, you know, superstar Billy Graham, uh, you know, Dick the Bruiser, the, uh, the original Sheik, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, you know, all those guys bled all the time. It was old school and, it, and you know, um, I think people kind of com confused the, the lines of, just because I didn't want to do hardcore wrestling didn't mean that I wasn't prepared to do the blood. And, you know, Dusty's one of my heroes, and I just got done reading the Superstar Billy Graham book where he talks about the blood is an enhancement of the match, and, you know, if somebody asks for it, that's, you know, what you give them. So it, it, it's, it's pretty funny to think that, you know, people confuse hardcore and old school when old school, you know, you look at Mid-South Wrestling or Championship Wrestling from Florida, that, that was the original uh, hardcore stuff. Oh, it, it, it's a dream come true. I mean, it's a, it's a pun, but and uh, I tell the story all the time. D uh, Dusty Rhodes came to Atlanta. He had just gotten released by WCW, came to Atlanta just to hang out. And I walk in the, the locker room and I met Dusty. I'm like, oh my God, you know, it's Dusty Rhodes. And Dreamer comes up to me and goes, you're working with the Dream tonight. And I go, oh, so what are we doing? And because I used to call Dreamer Dream. I'm like, hey, Dream, you know. But he goes, no, you're working with the real Dream tonight. And... I walked up to him, I said, sir, you know, is there anything, we just knew we had the promo and the, the, the uh, elbow, and I said, is there anything I can't touch on? And Bill Alfonso w says to Dusty Rhodes, this kid's really good, this kid's really good, daddy, you know? And Dusty goes, if you're as good as they say, we don't need to talk about anything. And I remember that, and we just went out and we had magic and chemistry, and it, it was just amazing to think that Dusty Rhodes in ECW, like, if you would have thought about it six months before, you would have went, no way, Dusty Rhodes would be awful in ECW. And the fans just embraced him. And I was went from here to here in one promo, and it, it was just, it was an amazing ride. And, you know, I'll always be grateful to Dusty for it. Uh, you know what? I'm not as, you know, I'm not as hard on him as a lot of guys are. Paul wore 30 different hats in ECW. He was the promoter, he was the booker, he was the TV producer, he was this, that, matchmaker, everything. The problem is, is that when you wear 30 hats, you, some are gonna suffer. And Paul, like Paul's got a reputation for being a liar. I think, excuse me, I think that Paul is more of a guy that doesn't want to disappoint anybody. So he'll lie or he would lie to us, but he was doing it because he wanted morale to stay high and he wanted everything to do good. I, I think as, as a promoter, he, he fails in the sense of he was wearing too many hats. If promotion was his only job, I think he could have done a heck of a job. Uh, you just watch what he did on the, the, the weeks leading up to the ECW One Night Stand. He had, had the mic and he would always hit his points. Sunday night, June 11th live on pay-per-view and he'd hit it three or four times in that one promo but make it seem like he's still talking to the guy but you know maybe the fan came in halfway through the the promo 
oh yeah, there's a pay-per-view. Let me write down that. There's a pay-per-view June 11th. You know, he's good at promoting himself and stuff like that. So I think if it was his only hat, he would have been a very successful promoter. But I, I think when you talk about him being a booker, I think he's one of the best of all time. Uh, you know what, in the beginning, in the beginning I had a few, but I, I wasn't making, I still had a full-time job when I started. Um, a couple of them did, but Paul always made good on them. And, you know, at the end, everybody talks about balanced checks. We weren't getting any checks. He had no money to give us, so, you know, he didn't even bother giving us checks that would bounce. And, but the, the one thing is that, you know, we, we went like 14 weeks without getting paid because the company was in such a bad thing. Um, but, you know, the checks that balance, I think, was more... You know, a thing, a thing right before I came in. You know, for the first couple, I think my, maybe two or three did, but Paul always made good on them. And, you know, if there was ever like a, a surcharge on from the bank and stuff like that, he always took care of it. So he, he took care of it right away. I was, but I had made a deal uh, to uh, keep my name, the king of old school and stuff like that, and rights to my videos. Uh, like rights to matches that I've been on and stuff like that, just in case. You know, I, I always looked to the future and thought that, you know, WWE would definitely buy the video collection. So, you know, it, it, it helped out in that way. I think it's, uh, it's something that it's unfortunate. And I, I can't say that it's as bad on the independence as it is somewhere else because a lot of the indie guys don't have the money to buy drugs. Um, and ECW, I, you know, I've always heard that like drugs were bad in ECW, but I always hung out with like Jack Victory and CW Anderson and Louis Dangerously and Dreamer and Francine, and that wasn't our scene, you know. So I don't know if there was drugs going on and stuff like that. Um, nowadays, I think guys are, you know, too scared to do it, and guys on the independents, you know, they don't want to do it because they don't have the money for it, and they're trying to get to the next level. So I, I, I would probably say in the 12 years I've been wrestling, this is the cleanest I've ever seen in the business. Uh, definitely doing the, the pay-per-view with Dusty. That, I mean, that's just, you know, that, that was just the ultimate because I came up with the, the bull rope idea. I said, you know, Paul, I'd love to do the bull rope match. And Paul didn't know it at the time, but my big hero in life, uh, my first start was Tully Blanchard. And when I got back to the locker room after the match, Paul gave me this big hug and said, that was better than anything that Dusty and Tully ever did. And I remember going into one part of the locker room, there were no way, I, I, like I had tears in my eyes because I, I thought that was like the ultimate compliment. Um, so, I mean, that is just like the ultimate. I mean, winning the ECW title, the NWA title, the AEW title were just super moments for me as a, a fan growing up and then becoming a wrestler because it's something that I can tell my grandkids about. And so, uh, and wrestling all my heroes. I mean, I've wrestled, you know, I've wrestled Mr. Wrestling 2. I have Tali Blanchard, Ricky Choshu, Shinya Hashimoto. I have wrestled all my, all my favorites, Barry Windham, you know. I, I wrestled Tali earlier in the year. I mean, I am like the most blessed wrestler that I know.